Right, well, we will start another set. It's still the radio amateur com um, acquaintance in Sheffield. Oh, right. We'll see if we can sort that one out. Does that mean no output or no public address? We'll have to find out what he means by that. So this is the third out of four sets from this gentleman. I so say we're only doing the make, we're only able to do things at one a week, and so batches like this are going to take a lot of time. This is box sequence one, so anyone who sent stuff in, they'll be given a box sequence number. So we're on box sequence one. That's going to be followed by box sequence two. Um, I can do a power lead for that, seeing as we make them. So, I'll tell you what, I think we'll put it, I think we'll take the lid off. It's in nice condition. I remember when Dixon's, as the curries used to be, was clearing these after Plustronics, the importer for these, went bankrupt. They bought the remaining stock and they were doing, I think they were doing the um, 2001 at something stupid like 9.99 or 12.99. And they were doing these at twenty nine ninety nine, which uh, I did take the advantage of buying our sample at that price at the time. So they're very reliable. They're never the last word in receive performance, but they are very reliable. And he's got that disconnector, so that's okay. Okay. Well, that's in nice condition doesn't look messed with and there's two things I'm going to need one's a mic have we got a mic on here I think that's a mic for a yeah I think that's a mic for one and um, yeah oh yeah the power lead that's what I want right we'll go back into record plug this microphone in if any of you stuck for these, uh, we we bought the tooling and mouldings and everything to make these up, spending, well, four figures on the stuff, so we can actually make these up. And I, I usually have them kicking around on eBay. We've got the mouldings for the radio side. I think they're 229 They're a bit more than the other moulding, which I think are 199 And then we make these leads up probably about for about 5 99 So we have got those because it, it seemed that I could support them uh, I'd like to be able to track down the Amstrad ones, to be honest, but they, they, they vary, don't they? Right, so he says no PA. I don't know whether he means no um, transmitter, no public address. So we'll just see what he means by that. So we'll switch picture in picture on. And we've got transmitted it's at 3.2 watts. So it could well mean he means no public address, so find our extension speaker plug it into the PA socket and switch to PA testing one two testing one two testing one two and there's no PA so we'll just go into normal switch back to CB check it's working on channel 20 did I plug an aerial? yeah I did I've just done to make a quick check on 2 metres so we just set the radio test set back to CB ok so we're on receive that's 0.3 of a microvolt we'll go through the radio uh, but that's working fine we'll just check that there's transmitted audio 1, 2, oh, hello Wallow, one, two. Looks a bit funny actually. Let's put our monitor receiver on. Just pop that back down to channel 20. Hello, testing one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Well, it doesn't sound funny. So we know that the mic our microphone's working, we know the speech processing's working because the radio's working. It's not working in public address mode, so we'll see what's happened to it. So pop that speaker back into there. One two, one two, one two, one two. 
Right, I'll pause the video while I have a look at the circuit diagrams. So having a look at the circuit, it's capacitor 243 the signal travels through. So we'll zoom in a bit. So we've got public address switch has three poles. Firstly, it's switching the volume controls input between CB or public address. Secondly, it's switching between the speaker or the public address from the amplifier. So it's either going to the speaker socket or it's going to the PA socket. And we know that's working because we've got sound coming out. And then thirdly, it switches the CB on in some way. I haven't even looked at that because I don't need to. Looks like it's something to do with... Anyway, it only happens in CB, so if CB works, that's what makes it, uh, it go through. I think it's the audio. Anyway, here we go. So, if it's working on CB, it's applying the CB to the volume control. If it's not working on PA... If we follow the wire down, it goes to capacitor 243, and then it goes to the output of the speech processor operational amplifier, which is an LM324. Now, because that's also used to drive the, um, the deviation, so pin 8 goes into the deviation control, and then to the applied to the very cap diode to do the deviation, it's the very same output goes through one resistor and capacitor 243. So if I locate capacitor 243, stick my finger on it, uh, or get a signal generator out, uh, and by that I mean an audio generator, uh, we should have something on PA. And capacitor 243, I looked it up, um, is there. So we've got the detector coil, capacitor 243 to the right. So detector coil and capacitor 243 to the right. So it'll be easy for me to go on the underside of that. So we'll key up the PA. So we're going to be looking at putting my finger on those. So we'll just key it up so it's activated. We've got absolutely nothing. So there's no point going any lower in the circuit because we could have looked at that resistor, but we're not getting anything. So what's happened? Have we got a broken track? Have we got a wire off the PA con uh, switch or what? Let's see if we can follow it. Just make sure we're absolutely sure that we're on the right one. We are. So we've got the underside of the coil there, we've got the capacitor there, so that's the far side, that's the input side. So we'll see if we can follow the track. Well it looks like the right one but I still haven't got anything, I'll just check again. It does send you a bit buzz eyed. Hmm. So let's see where we lose it. Whoops, wrong way. Now it'd be difficult to get to the PA switch with it being triple pole, it'd mean taking the front panel off and all that. So if I touch the volume control, and it's the volume control, it's not the wiper, it's the non earthy side. So if I touch that with my finger on this metal we're at full volume. So 
so it would be the opposite side to what's nearest me. So the wiper, we can hear we've got audio being amplified. Let's see if we can get to the far side. And as you can hear, the far side of that volume control is there. Well, to be honest, we've only got the switch between there So we've either got a wire off between the front panel or that triple pole switch is faulty which will be very very difficult to replace. So um, I don't have anything telling me what wire goes where so it's a bit of a, of a guesswork. You know what? It's going to be the it'll be the centre pole, won't it? It won't be the one nearest me. So I'm going to key it up again, and we'll just try and prod the switch. So I've asked the outer. So let's go for the other outer. Let's go for the inner. We've definitely got audio on the switch. And we've got it on both of the poles. So is the centre, it would be absolutely typical, the most difficult to get to the centre. Can we get to it from this side? There's the centre pole. So the PA is in the upper, upper PA position. So that's CB, that's PA. So the upper one has nothing to do with what we're doing. It's the next one down. And both of them are making a working sound. So we've got the orange wire from that switch. Orange wire. And that goes where? Looks like it goes in that wiring harness. looks like it's the one that goes to 29 but it might not be so let's, try, let's just try and follow it around looks like that one Not that one. Where's that go? That one. There, isn't it? So it's the one that goes to the volume control is the orange. So we've got it at the volume control end and we've got it at the switch end, which uh, I had before.
So the other end is the green wire. And it's the green wire that has apparently snapped off. Wow! There we are. That's it. That's the culprit. I'll pause the video while I attempt to solder that on into the middle of the three pole switch. Well, would you believe that? I suppose it's so difficult to put on that it's probably never been soldered properly. So let's hope I can do a better job than the factory managed. Because not many people would come across that fault, because not many people use PA, which just goes to show how meticulous mate he is in testing his radios in his collection. Right, I'll be with you in a moment. Right, we'll see whether that works. It does. Testing one, two, testing one, two. Testing one, two, testing one, two, testing one, two, testing one, two, testing one, two. Good, that's public address, right. Okay, so we'll now go through the CB in the normal way. But who would expect that? And even poking around the switch, I still didn't spot it until I actually went to the trouble of going through everything. So I'm not going to look at the VCO, it's not uh, going to be an issue. The wax is still in the core and there's no need to do that. So we'll just go through. I'm still going to have to dig a service manual out or something because I won't remember what we're doing. Oh, we need to go back to CB now. So we'll make sure we're in DX, we're in... Oh, he's got a dimmer, wow. Filter, does that work? I better put the speaker back into the speaker. Yep. So, RF gain, mic gain. Turn the volume down, press transmit. And let's go for it. It should be 27.79.125. As you can see, it's 27.79. Nine one two three. So I, I don't need to adjust the trimmer there because it's it's spot on. So here we go. Oops, need to put you back on there. So three point two watts. Three point two watts. Three point four watts. Three point four watts. Oh, wrong tool. Three and a half watts. Three point eight watts. Sure, so these cores haven't been messed with. But the, the coil stretch has reduced the power a little bit. Whisk her away now.
Now these sets don't have low power, which was actually a bit of a grey area because uh, if you complained, then Plus Trunks would have had to provide low power somehow by law. But uh, there you are. About 3.9 watts. Because it's now been warmed up because I've been um, running it. If I turn the power supply up, we're going to get... Whoa, that's gone way over. We're going to get it at 13.9 volts. It's that close. So, um, that's that done. Let's see where it's reading on the meter when I key up. It's actually reading on the 5, so it could do with coming down a fraction on the meter reading. Um, can I remember which the meter is? Um, no, of course I can't. Is it that one? I'll just go through them. It really doesn't matter. No, it's not that one. Is it that one? It is. And that's as low as it goes, to be honest. And is this one of these sets which doesn't have a receive meter? It might have on this one. Let's see where deviation is. Two. Is it the other one down there? Yeah, it is. It's a bit dirty, though. I'll just put some service oil on it. Waggle it around a bit. Wallow. It's well over. One to wallow. That should be alright. So transmit uh, meter and deviation is there. Wallow, one, two, one, two, wallow, wallow. Just listen to it on our monitor receiver. Testing one, two, testing one, two, one, two, three, four, five. Good. That's it, we'll go over to receive. So at the moment, if I stick the cyanide meter on, what's it supposed to do? Whoa. It actually says that S meter sensitivity for S9 is 100 microvolts. Uh, that's unusual for it to be right. Right, so let's see if we can get a bit more. So we'll go over to the, oh no, we'll do the detector first. I'll put the oscilloscope on and switch the bench light off. Put an S9 signal on of 100 microvolts, just the volume, so we've got a sensible trace, and just de just the detector to make sure that's peak and it was spot on. Now on this Maxon chassis it can uh, drift, but it hasn't. So we'll go back to where we were, we'll go to the cyanide meter, we'll go through the front end. So we'll adjust that till we get about 4 dB so the, sig so the signal generator is not saturating the receiver. Just turn the volume down a bit and here goes. Spot on. 
Wow, I got a bit more out of it. So now we've dropped the attenuator so we've got less signal. Next one. Fraction out of that one. Next one. Fraction out of that. I'm just going to go back on that one. Yep, that's it. So, if you remember, we were at 1 microvolt for 20 dB cyanide, which was already good. So what are we now? Has it made any difference? It's 0.95 microvolts for 20 dB cyanide. <laughs> so, so for 12 dB, which is what we're normally working to, this radio is receiving at... 0.35 of a microvolt for 10 dB it's receiving at 0.28 so if I go down to the 0.3 um, setting I'll just show you the attenuator controls so we're now at 0.3 of a microvolt I've still got uh, 12 dB on the uh, sound meter how, how, how we can, can we hear it down to 0 0.25 0 0.2 0.15 comes in about 0.15 of a microvolt so it's very very good so let's get that s9 i think it's preset on these and it is its spot it's it, well it's s8 isn't it but is it not adjustable on these and there's been occasions that i've popped an extra preset in just to alleviate any concerns but it's so near so it's saying S8 so how much signal does it need to get S9 so it's 150 microvolts for S9 but it is manufactured like this it isn't faulty and I say if it was way out I'd ask the customer if he wants it modifying but it isn't way out so I'm not going to ask the customer if he wants modifying um, late, some production of, of various Maxcoms with this chassis did actually put a preset in. So if we look at the circuit diagram, if we can get to where we come to that point. In other words, if I can find the meter on the diagram, oh, it's there. So let's see. Um, Well, it is, it's shown as having one, but you know it depends. It depends where you are on, on the production. It's usually on the back of the meter. And this is going to be an earlier one, I presume. And what it says is a date code on the back. Oh, February eighty-two. It's not that early. Anyway, it hasn't got the the preset. I don't think. Though it does leave us with two presets, doesn't it? It leaves us with... I might be lying about all this. It leaves us with that one. It is, it's that one. It's that one. It's there. That's the preset for the meter. So it, ha it is fitted on this one. Good. So that leaves us with squelch, which is there. So we're on the attenuator controls. I'm going to put the radio at full squelch. And here goes. We want the squelch to open when the radio is at S9. So um, there's 10 microvolts, 30 microvolts, 100 microvolts. It's coming in at that. That's exactly where it wants to be. And if it wasn't, we would adjust the preset just there to bring the squelch into line with what we want. So it's spot on. So what I'm now going to do is put the signal generator to standby, turn the squelch down to threshold, set threshold. See when it comes in. Uh, you know, it's excellent. It's coming in at 0.26 of a microvolt and it's leaving at 2.2 micro, uh, 0.22 of a microvolt. So it's a really sensitive squelch with good hysteresis. What more can you want? 
So I'm very pleased for him, that's a nice radio. Now these have an antenna warning indicator and basically we need to set this up with a matcher. So I'm going to give it a bad match. So I'll come back to you when I find a patch lead. Okay, back in to record. It's the next day. I've done my morning church service. It's Sunday. So we've got this um, SWR meter on here, which has a built-in match. We're going to look at the antenna warning indicator. They don't always work. I don't know whether it wants it restoring if it doesn't. So if we look at to forward power on this radio, 5 watts, it says uh, we're in need to be in power mode. It says that this radio is doing a shade under 6 watts which of course we know the radio is doing 3.9 so like the target meter it's, uh, it's a bit uh, over generous so we're going to go into SWR mode and forward set the end with the thingy with the adjustment to the set point reflect 1.3 to 1 through the test set dummy load so what we're going to now introduce is to put the matcher on because I want to make the SWR worse. So just over three to one. Just into the red, aren't we there? So let's just have the antenna warning adjusted. So is that that 3 to 1 SWR? I, well, it either doesn't work or it doesn't like it there. So let's make the SWR a bit worse. Let's try... Let's try a 3.5 to 1 SWR. doesn't work so let's have another go make it a bit worse still so we'll give it a three and a half four to one as to be on ah there we are so now we've got the antenna warning light so we'll back this off, we'll key it up, so you can see them both. So, SWR, switch the matter out. Well that didn't work, did it, because we've still got the antenna warning indicator on. So. <laughs> We'll adjust it so it's not on with a, a decent SWR. Switch the matcher in. And there we've, we've got it now. Just over 3 to 1. Normal mode. No SWR problem. Bad load. SWR light comes on. So we'll go straight back to the aerial again make sure we've got it sussed this time it's a bit of a faff and there we have it let's try the other channels Fine. Right, so we'll put that away. And we'll put the lids on.
this has been neatly marked as to which one goes where. Subject to that being correct, of course. I'm just curious now as to whether it's right. So we'll get the meter out, we'll put it to ohms. So what they're saying is the negative of the speaker is the green. So does that go to chassis? It does. And the yellow is the positive, which of course doesn't go to chassis. That is absolutely correct. Would have been funny if it was the wrong way around. I don't think it actually matters as long as you haven't got... It matters on stereos because you can be out of phase. So you've got one cone going in and the other one coming out and um, obviously that can be dodgy. We'll unplug the extension speaker. Yes, that's coming through there fine. We'll switch it off and put the rest of the screws in. I did do these in a random order, you know, there's the two audio lines, and that last one was a corker, absolute corker, um, but I don't, I don't do them in any particular sequence, if there's a box of four radios, it's sensible to do the same types together, because that clearly saves time. Uh, why can't I find another two screws that actually match, we'll worry about that later. Um, I do put these in little pots and, and then I go and clunk the pot. Okay, so switch it on. We're, so it's Sunday morning, the 9th of January, and it's half past 11. One Anna Roger. One on a Roger. And a final check that it still works in PA, which is really what it came in for. Testing one, two, testing one, two, one, two, three, four, five. It certainly does. So there we have it. We did hear a bit of something, didn't we? We'll do an on the air test later on. And that's the Midland 4001 from 1981 using the Maxcom chassis or Maxon chassis. And it's now living. And the next set for we're going to be doing is another of this gentleman. And it's the final one. 
I don't know whether it's a 4001 or a 3001, but I think it's got more issues than this one. So, thanks for watching.